The top 10 best-selling Star Wars games of all time kind of surprised me, to be honest. Really didn't expect them to be in this order, and these games at the top. The other day, Respawn and EA announced that Jedi Fallen Order had passed 20 million copies sold. So I thought this would be a great chance to look at the highest-selling Star Wars games of all time. Before you watch this, I encourage you to write your own list ranking Star Wars games based on how many copies you think they sold, and then see how wrong you were. At the end of this, I might also go over a couple games that surprised didn't make the cut. But this list is taken from the NPD Group, a company which tracks statistics in media industries and is based on sales in the US between January 1995 and March 2021. So there's 26 years of research in this one video. Man, that's a long, long time. Hey everyone, it's Andrew. <laughs> At number 10, we have Star Wars Shadows of the Empire, originally released in 1996, making it the oldest game on this list, although you'd have to think it will likely be knocked out of the top 10 in the coming years with the new releases of Star Wars games that are coming soon. Anyway, Shadows of the Empire is a single player action adventure game where you play as mercenary Dash Rendar and need to help Luke Skywalker rescue Princess Leia from the evil Prince Jizor. And this game is part of the larger Shadows of the Empire multimedia project. Lucasfilm began rolling out in 1996. Its main purpose was to bridge the gap between Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi without actually making a film. They released everything but a film. Along with the game, Lucasfilm released a novel, a junior novel, there was a comic book series, a soundtrack, trading cards, posters, toys, action figures, and so much more. Everything but an actual movie. <laughs> the game's reception was generally positive, and for the time, it was a fun, immersive third-person action shooter, with some decent cutscenes also for the time, apart from Luke's face. Dear God, what am I looking at? Now, I can't find any current info on exactly how many copies Shadows of the Empire has sold to date, but it was the third highest selling Nintendo 64 game in 1997, with over a million copies sold, which for 1997 was pretty damn good. Gaming back then was definitely not where it is today. So you sell a million, you're in the good. At number nine, we have the original, the classic Star Wars Battlefront, released in 2004 and developed by Pandemic Studios. This is the game that changed everything for Star Wars games. Between the sandbox style gameplay, the vehicles, the grenade spam class system, the wide range of planets and the chaos, this game had all the makings of a classic. Classic. And this game also featured the birth of the classic Galactic Conquest game mode, in which you do exactly that, conquer the galaxy. Originally released in what's still arguably the golden era of gaming, specifically Star Wars gaming on the PS2, original Xbox and PC, the game sold 1.5 million copies on PS2 by July 2006 in the US alone. Battlefront's original online servers were shut down way back in 2010, but since May 1st, 2020, you can now play the game online on Steam. And people are actually still playing. You might remember the couple videos I made about playing this game online. It's amazing. And you know one other thing that made this so great? Tamura Morrison. He voices all the clones. At number 8, we have the original LEGO Star Wars the video game, released in 2005. This was the first LEGO game released by TT Games, which laid the foundations for every LEGO game since. The classic Dexter's Diner, 56 playable characters, and at least 5 missions for The Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, and Revenge of the Sith. This game released released right during the peak of Star Wars Gaming 2005, the year of Revenge of the Sith, the movie and the game, Republic Commando, Battlefront 2 and this, all in the same year. And it released with an extremely positive reception and defined the path forward for LEGO Gaming. Star Wars already saved LEGO from bankruptcy in the 90s after striking a licensing deal with Lucasfilm to create Star Wars LEGO toys. And now Star Wars was doing the same for LEGO Gaming, the greatest partnership in the history of marketing. It was the perfect blend of puzzle solving, action, co-op modes, and a large roster of characters. To date, it's one of the best-selling PS2 games of all time, and by May 2009 had sold at least 6.7 million copies across all platforms worldwide. And it made us all obsessed with collecting LEGO studs. At number 7, we have the sequel, LEGO Star Wars 2, the original trilogy. TT Games were really quick to back up their overnight success by releasing this game the following year, in 2006. And this was also immediately successful. Successful. This game featured 68 playable characters, expanding on the first game, and focused on levels from A New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi. And these games became immediate classics for the way in which they retold the events of the Star Wars saga, with comical, light-hearted animation and everyone's favourite grunts. Mm. Mm. 
The game also featured the Moss Eisley Cantina as the hub world and built upon the stud collecting obsession of the original. Another PS2 bestseller, Lego Star Wars 2 sold over 1.1 million copies in its first week and over 8.2 million copies by May 2009. Next up in sixth place is yet another classic, Star Wars Battlefront 2 the original from 2005, the game that took so much from the first game and developed the perfect ultimate experience that defines the Battlefront series. That's what this game is. Perfection. Between the awesome single player told from the perspective of a clone trooper fighting in the 501st during the Clone Wars through Order 66 and into the Imperial era ending with the Battle of Hoth, all narrated by Tamora Morrison, and the multiplayer with large scale battles, the options for instant action, conquest, hero assault, space battles, and so much more. This is truly still the ultimate Battlefront experience. Again, like its predecessor, Battlefront 2 is still playable online on PC with community run events, mod servers, and more still going strong. And I think since this game was released 16 years ago, lots of us have been longing for a game that comes close to what this game achieved. Large scale sandbox chaos. A Battlefront 3 perhaps. Sure, EA's games were unique in their own way, but that same magic just isn't quite there. Perhaps one day we'll get that dream Battlefront game, but until then, we'll always have the game that told us to watch those wrist rockets. By 2007, two years after its release, Battlefront 2 had sold over 6 million copies, and there have likely been several million more sold since then. At number 5, a game that I'm honestly surprised is above Battlefront 2, Star Wars The Force Unleashed, released in 2008, but I can possibly see why it's above Battlefront 2, and it's all to do with the marketing. As the developers said way back, the goal with The Force Unleashed was to make players think they are actually finally in a Star Wars movie, and this game certainly achieved that. A third person single player action game set between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope, you play as Galen Marek, Darth Vader's apprentice, you start the game by hunting down Jedi who survived Order 66, and to cut a long and somewhat confusing story short, Galen falls in love, realises Vader killed his parents, tries to do the right thing, and then right at the end, you're given a choice of light or dark side, with two alternate endings, man, we need more games like this, more stuff like this, alternate endings, man, love it, doesn't work with Disney's new Star Wars canon though, does it, they like to keep everything on one timeline, one track, but I really think this game set out to achieve its goal, ridiculous action, an overpowered main character with insane lightsaber and force abilities, great set pieces and settings, and an interesting story. And this game was part of Lucasfilm's big Force Unleashed project, which like Shadows of the Empire included various books, comics, merchandise, and the two games, and also there was supposed to be a third, but that was cancelled. At the time, The Force Unleashed was both the fastest selling Star Wars game and LucasArts fastest selling game ever, and nine months after its release, it had already sold over 6 million copies and I'm sure lots more have been sold since. At number 4 is the game that combined two of the best PS2 titles ever made, Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. What a great idea TT Games had, 2005 released the first Lego Star Wars, 2006 released Lego Star Wars 2, and 2007 combined both games and released The Complete Saga, with a total of 36 story levels, 20 bounty hunter missions, 6 bonus levels, 160 characters, featuring a larger hub world, character customization, and everything players loved from the first two games. It was genius, because now players could play through the complete Star Wars saga all in one game, with a bunch of bonus content and missions the previous games lacked. And for a game released all the way back in 2007, it's really impressive this is hanging on to the fourth place on this list. It actually held the top spot until 2017, and as of 2017, the complete saga had sold over 15.29 million copies. And it was also the best selling Lego video game of all time until 2017, when it was surpassed by Lego Marvel Super Heroes. Alright, top 3 best selling Star Wars games, let's do this. At number 3 is EA's Star Wars Battlefront 2, yes, the second one. And had this game had a smoother launch, I guarantee it would have been at the top of this list, if it launched with all the content it features today, but you know, that wasn't really viable. With the amount of content that's in this game, Battlefront 2 really is the largest, most detailed Star Wars battle simulator out there. The developers at EA DICE have painstakingly recreated sets and planets from the films to create possibly the most stunning and graphically impressive Star Wars game to date. Since its launch in late 2017, the game has received over 25 content updates with heavy focus on the Clone Wars, heroes, and more. Even though it arguably doesn't capture the same magic of the original Battlefront 2, this game features loads more content, over 50 
50 individual maps, dozens of trooper and hero appearances, a story mode, large scale game modes, impressive space combat, and so much more. Now, you might be confused as to why this game's sitting at number three on the list after it was free on the Epic Games Store earlier this year, which brought in over 19 million new players. Well, it's because this list tracks sales, not free promotions. So yes, even if Battlefront 2 is the most downloaded Star Wars game ever, it's not the most sold. By December 2017, it had sold over 9 million copies, which was actually below EA sales expectation, which was over 10 million. But they certainly made up for that in the next few years, didn't they? Lots and lots of updates and lots of players returned. At number two, the Star Wars game that delivered possibly the most impressive single player Star Wars campaign to date, we have Jedi Fallen Order. Like I said at the start of the video, Fallen Order recently surpassed 20 million sales, just over a year and a half after it was released. You play as Calculated Kestis, a Jedi Padawan in hiding five years following Order 66, and the game features an impressive Metroidvania map design across multiple planets, satisfying lightsaber combat, force powers, and an immersive narrative. I mean, anything to do with or around or involving Order 66 is generally going to be pretty good. Anyway, Calculator's master gets killed, you play through flashbacks and witness the darkest time period in Star Wars from the perspective of a young boy. It's good stuff. The game also recently had a re-release on the next gen PS5 and Xbox Series consoles, and there's reportedly a sequel in the works, so lots to look forward to. The Calculator gets stabbed by Darth Vader, that's what the ending of these games is going to be. And the number one spot, the best-selling Star Wars game of all time to date is EA Star Wars Battlefront from 2015, which yes, might be a little surprising, but I think we can determine a few reasons as to why this one takes the top spot. Number one, it's a reboot of one of the most popular Star Wars game series in history. Number two, it's essentially Battlefront 3, and by 2015 when it was released, players were basically gagging for new Star Wars games following the Disney takeover in 2012, the cancellation of 2008's Battlefront 3, and the fact a Battlefront game hadn't released in over 10 years. And number three, this game's marketing was incredible. That trailer, man, that gameplay trailer blew everyone's minds. Never before had we seen Star Wars worlds brought to life with such detail, graphic fidelity, and scale. Battlefront's flagship game mode is Walker Assault, where you're tasked with either destroying or protecting at, -AT walkers as they make their way through the map. And in this game mode, there are regular infantry, special characters, heroes, vehicles, aerial fighters, even though the game doesn't feature the same sandbox elements as the original Battlefronts and focuses on this game mode in favor of a conquest style mode, it was like nothing we'd ever seen before. This game still looks visually stunning six years on. The sound design, man, the first time hearing those thermal imploders. Although it was met with some criticism, a lack of content, a few other things, it sold 13 million copies in just its first two months following release, and has since sold lots more. Even though we don't have exact figures right now up to date, EA's Battlefront 1 and 2 combined had sold over 33 million copies by October 2019, and I'm sure they've both sold lots more since, so huge stuff. So a couple games I'm really surprised didn't make the cut, The Force Unleashed 2. This game had huge marketing following the release and although it wasn't met with the same critical success, I'm surprised it's not here. And Knights of the Old Republic, released in 2003, which is still one of the most highly rated Star Wars games ever made nearly 20 years on. So I'd love to know if you're surprised about this list. And if there are any other Star Wars games out there you think should have made the cut, connect Star Wars anyone? Let me know in the comments. And for more Star Wars and Star Wars gaming, you can watch one of these videos here and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and join my Discord for the latest on Star Wars news, gaming updates, and everything you need in your life. And thanks for watching this. My name's Andrew. I'll catch you soon. <laughs> Stay bombastic.